walkout of ambulance workers will go ahead tomorrow after failed crisis talks where the health secretary reportedly told unions that NHS workers must increase their productivity to justify any pay rise. But does the Business and Energy Secretary Grant Chaps agree with that? Well, we'll, we'll ask you in a second, Mr Chaps, but just before we come to that question, can we just start with this failed uh, UK rocket launch from Cornwall last night? Because that's part of your ministerial brief. You were actually on the live stream last night. Can you tell us any more about what went wrong? Yeah, so, look, it appears that in the last stages, the bit where the rocket would have reached um, space, uh, 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 that's where the failure seems to have been. Uh, we haven't got all the details uh, as yet. The, the actual takeoff launch, you see a picture there, uh, that went perfectly. The initial firing of the rocket in stage two looks like it went uh, well. It looks like it was something in the stage three. Uh, I chair the, the UK's National Space Council, so, of course, we'll be doing a lot of post-mortem to find out exactly what happened. Space is inherently difficult, but, and people may not know this, but... Uh, realise this, I, I, it came as a surprise to me to learn that the UK produces more satellites than anywhere outside of California. If we can crack the ability to launch these satellites as well, that's a lot of industry, that's a lot of jobs for Britain. Um, so it's something we're, we're very keen to, to, to do and I, I'm, I've no doubt we'll be back. So you're saying, uh, that, so you're saying that although, obviously, it's a huge disappointment because it was, it was yeah. really heavily trailed yesterday. It's also a um, huge amount of money. And a huge amount of money, absolutely. But we should be philosophical about this because, as you say, rocketry is pretty hit and miss even it, today. It's complex stuff. But actually, in terms of, of money, I mean, obviously, this is largely a private endeavour, but nonetheless, um, this is much less expensive than rockets of, uh, you know, that you vertical rockets. This goes up in a, a 747, as your pictures are showing, uh, and there's nothing unusual about an aircraft taking off. Uh, that gets up to about 35,000 feet and then fires the rocket. And the, the actual satellites on board, um, I don't specifically know about these nine, which were all insured, by the way, but um, they're, they're not necessarily uh, tens of millions of pounds. You can have nano satellites, which could just be uh, 200,000 pounds, something in, in that region, uh, because uh, these are the satellites that this country specialises in. There's a big segment of the market, and we're looking for up to seven different launch sites in the UK, vertical as well as yeah. horizontal uh, aircraft launch Look, uh, in the next few years. Yeah, Mr Sheps, the thing is that it is uh, 20 million pounds. It failed to launch, and it comes at a time <clears> when people <throat> tomorrow will be frightened about ringing 999 <laughs> because they're worried if paramedics go on strike they won't get the treatment they need. I know that uh, 20 million wouldn't cover a lot of the, um, the increases in pay uh, that the NHS workers need, but it is a contrast, isn't it, for people? What are you going to do for those NHS workers who we all support and need to keep us alive, frankly. Yeah, I, sorry, I should just say on the on on the money for for space. Th this is this is private money. There has been some public support to uh, Cornwall to uh, Newquay Spaceport, but the the actual launch hasn't cost the the public purse uh, any significant sums of money. And of course, the satellites themselves help, including with things like uh, the NHS. So when an ambulance turns up and it's using GPS, uh, it's satellites that are helping to do that. Satellites help in all sorts of ways. Space helps in all sorts of ways these days. So. It's very much part of people's day-to-day. -day. But turning to these ambulance strikes, first of all, I, I want to pay tribute to, to everyone in the NHS, I think. You know, uh, it's an incredible um, service. It's been under unprecedented pressure post-COVID. Uh, and I completely understand that people want to be uh, paid more. And that's why these independent pay review bodies have recommended increases in pay, which would be about £1,400. Uh, and uh, on average, and, and we'd like to see that paid and these strikes not happen. But I'm also introducing legislation today in Parliament um, to say that if there are strikes, we do need to have some minimum safety levels so that people in this country are kept safe. How do you enforce them? So they would be contractual, um, so in the same way as any other contract is in, enforced. Um, it simply it happens elsewhere in the world. It's, it, actually, we're out of step with most European countries. France and Spain and other places already have minimum safety levels in place. And to give you an example, uh, the other week we had um, strikes. The Royal College of Nursing, so the nurses... Uh, we thought were very responsible. They withdrew their labour, but they, uh, they offered at a national level the minimum safety that they would put in place 
to operate during that strike. On the other hand, on the ambulances with the unions there, they wouldn't provide a national cover for this. So it was actually different in different areas. And we want to make sure it's consistent across the country. If you have a heart attack or if you have a stroke, uh, you should know that even when there's a strike on, an industrial dispute on, you should at least still be able to get an ambulance. And uh, that's what we want to do. Yeah, and that's, that's the okay. law I'll be introducing. The trouble is, we don't even seem to have a minimum service level when there isn't a strike on. I mean, according <laughs> yeah. to the College of Emergency Medicine, we're losing lives weekly above normal levels because of staffing issues. You mentioned COVID, but we have had a lack of staff in the NHS from well before uh, the COVID years under this government. Well, I think I'm right in saying that the uh, ambulance times were, were falling before um, COVID, but there's no doubt that the NHS is under enormous pressure, not, I would say, through lack of money and expenditure. We're spending an extraordinary £167 billion on the NHS uh, this coming year. So there's a huge amount of money going in, but there's massive pressure. And that is largely because for two and a half years, the NHS had to focus on this single issue, or you know, massively on the single issue, obviously did other things meanwhile, but of COVID, that has led to massive backlogs. And of course, yeah, every sorry, health system Mr. is Schatz, suffering to lack recover. Of staff puts pressure. You know, if you are lacking tens of thousands of nurses, then the other nurses are going to have to pick up the slack. If you have had a pay freeze under austerity and suddenly inflation is running mm. at the level it's running at now, you're not going to be able to afford your weekly food bill, which is yeah. why food banks are being used now by nurses. What are you going to do to uh, make sure that you pay nurses, ambulance workers, enough to retain them and to recruit the numbers we need to fill the gaps. Yes. First of all, I should say that actually nurses and actually NHS staff were one of the only areas, in fact, the only area that got an increase during um, COVID. So we did see an increase uh, last year when everywhere else in the public sector was being frozen. Secondly, there are actually ten tens of thousands more nurses now than there were in 2019. So the, the numbers have been increasing. But it, look, I'm not denying that the pressures are exceptional. And that is actually why we you know, are trying to work with with uh, the nurses, with the NHS, to make sure that this recovers as quickly as possible as a service. But the pay offer on uh, there's a pay offer on the table. It's about one thousand four hundred pounds uh, on average. It's not a figure plucked out of the sky by the government or by ministers. It's actually through a process which is called the independent pay review bodies. It's a process that the unions twenty years ago asked to be set up. Are you suggesting we... you're not shifting on the offer? Uh, well, I'm not personally in involved in those particular uh, talks, and it will be for those who are uh, to have those discussions. And I think the point, just to sort of pick up on something you said in your introduction, uh, the, 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 when it comes to the point I think you were making about productivity, no one thinks that nurses don't work incredibly hard, and we're very, very grateful for all the work that uh, nurses and everyone in the NHS does. So what did he mean when he, what, what did well, he, mean when he, to, he called? What did yes, your colleague mean when he called for an increase in productivity? Yeah, well, we pay? only heard that from. From, from one side of those discussions. But I think what he meant was uh, that actually nowadays there are many ways where you can do things much quicker using technology, for example, uh, to enable people to do their jobs more easily and perhaps give them some of their time back. Uh, so that kind of modernisation obviously massively helps. And I've seen in other areas of public services, uh, the railways being a very good example that I know uh, a lot about as a former transport secretary, how we could be modernising the way that we repair uh, our railways, for example, using technology there uh, and saving uh, a, a lot of people's time and actually making it safer for people as well. So uh, in the health service, there'll be many efficiencies, many places where we can actually help people do their job more easily. And I think that's probably what he would be getting at. All right, Mr Chaps, thank you very much indeed for your time You're this morning. And we await more details of what happened uh, in the skies above Cornwall last night. Thank you. It's 8.35, just gone.